Oh my god, that was kind of dangerous to stand on that chair. Hey guys, Mel here. Welcome back to the String Things channel. If you are new here, my name is Mel, and this is my little space where I share everything knitting, what projects I'm working on, what yarn I'm buying, whatever else comes up. Uh, today I wanted to go through some old whips with you guys and decide if I'm going to continue or frog them. Now, does the mere mention of frogging bring you to a state of anxiety? Um, because I personally find it quite liberating in terms of what I'm about to show you guys. I'm not afraid to frog a little bit if it refers to a mistake as um, loop loops and threads is his username on instagram and he put out a post kind of just saying how do you feel about unraveling go and i did comment on it and one thing that he said was uh the term pebble in your shoe and i thought that hit the nail on the head about how some mistakes feel and the reason for unraveling or frogging your projects now I know some people tend to leave mistakes in, and I certainly have myself. It depends on the degree to which it's going to affect the garment in the end. If it's not going to change in terms of construction, and it has not affected stitch count in any way, then I tend to leave it in. But if it's something that's going to visually bother me, but maybe not necessarily bother someone else, I'm going to frog it. And definitely frog those ones that affect my stitch count, because... If I try to go back and I try to increase or decrease, it ends up being a big regret. So let's get into these old whips. I got a bag. All right, this first one here. What do I got? It's in a toft bag. Uh, something I got for my crochet days. And, okay, in here is ooh, a sock that looks almost done, like just plain vanilla sock. And, oh, look at that. So, I have almost two complete socks here a pair that has just been whoa hi crochet hook um i can't tell you when i started these but i did start them sometime earlier this year and the idea was just to make a vanilla sock with a ribbed leg tube just something cozy um the fact that these are so close to completion i probably should just finish them so i'm gonna put them in the uh stick it out and finish it pile uh so this yarn is drops fable fable i'm not sure it's a superwash oh treated wool Again, I'm so sorry guys, I am not good at this hold the product up thing, but uh, what is the color? Just take my word for it. I thought the color was just like beige. It says color 101, but I feel like when I bought it, it just said beige. So, I mean, it looks like a beige sock. Oh man, I'm, just, I'm already starting to get tangled here uh yeah just plain old beige although when i got it when i was looking at this online it looked i don't necessarily lighter but this one when it arrived it's got quite a bit of kind of like a purple undertone going on so it almost looks like a purple fawn lilac fawn color um not the end of the world, because I wasn't really looking to make a very specific color. I just wanted some super plain socks. 
I did a German short row heel, which I don't like. I, for whatever reason, my tension when I do German short rows, it's really hit or miss. And this one was definitely a miss. Like it's very holy. But these are most likely going to end up being like inside when my feet are cold socks, not ones that I'm actually going to wear out the shoes. And these are on 2.5 millimeter little circulars that I have from Addy. But yeah, I think I think I will finish them because they are so freaking close. <laughs> But honestly, I don't even know the last time I actually did any stitches on this, so. Okay, so that's in the I will continue pile. What else do we got in this bag? That is a bag. Um, okay. What's in bag number two? Okay, so. One ball of yarn. So this is a fingering weight yarn and the start of a camisole number two from My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I kind of started this one because I just felt like I needed to knit. So I was in definitely more of a process mood over a product mood. and. I'm going to put this one in the frog pile because I'm not a huge fan of this color. Like, I think it looks decent. Like, on camera, it seems to look okay against my skin. But once I go back to my vampire mode when I'm really pale, um, I don't think this color is going to be very flattering on me. And I, yeah. So... Why do I even have this yarn? And I only have one ball of this yarn. This is the We Are Knitters Finita. Finita? Finita yarn. 70% merino wool, 30% baby alpaca, 100 grams, 400 meters. Bought this a long time ago because I actually wanted to test to see how it would look paired with mohair. So this is the color beige. And I did buy beige mohair but when it arrived I here I'll show you the color so I understand that different fibers take dye differently but guys this is this is the beige mohair from we are knitters and beige finita yarn it's too much of a contrast for my liking You know, one is the mohair is quite a bit warmer and I'm okay if it's darker, but the fact that it seems to be running warm where the Finita yarn is kind of more neutral, cool and less brown. Yeah, I don't know. It's too much of a contrast for me. Although it, the Finita yarn does seem to look like the color of the... Um, like, I guess it's like the base silk thread portion of the mohair, but yeah, I don't want to go through all the work to make a camisole that I'm going to maybe not even ever wear. So this one is going in the frog pile, guys. And just one left in this bag. Is that really all I have for stinky aging whips? I guess so. Stinky. They're not actually stinky, but. Okay, so this, can I pull this out? Does it have some stoppers? Oh, very delicately. This is a little sweater, circular yoke sweater that I started for my daughter, Darcy. This is knit up in a, a cotton acrylic yarn, and the pattern is the UNICEF sweater um, from Knitting for Olive, and proceeds from the purchase of this pattern go to UNICEF. 
and you can either do these little girls in dresses or little boys. I just decided to do all the girls in dresses for the um, motif pattern on here just to keep it simple and another one where I cast on because I just felt like working on something different <laughs> and I got to the body so it's kind of like I, I haven't even made it to sleeve island I'm on body island with this one and the way the size that I've knit up like, I have some time. Like, it could probably still fit Darcy. Maybe even next year. I don't know. She's a bit small. And so, not really in a rush to finish this. But I'm also, because of the amount of work I put into the little motif. Although, with this kind of cotton blend yarn, it really is not being kind about my uh, attention here throughout the color work so I've obviously pulled too tight or I've had my floats are too tight so it's not looking the greatest and the pattern uh, the recommended yarn is actually something wooly which I find I'm a lot better with um, maintaining a consistent tension for color work and it helps to hide some of the, you know, mishaps because of a little bit of the fuzziness and the ability to block out a little bit of that too. Um, I'm not sure if I'm ready to frog this one, but it's a maybe. It's definitely a maybe. It's not a definite no. It's not a definite yes. So uh, I think this one's going to have to marinate and uh, a little longer in this bag until I really decide what I'm going to do with it. I'll probably end up making a lot more other things for Darcy before tackling this again. And then I'll get to the point where it's too small and I'll have to frog it anyways. That's my guess. All right, guys, that's it for uh, my bag of whips, which is actually not too bad. I, I'm definitely not a monogamous knitter, but I definitely don't like to have a lot of whips going. So next, I wanted to go through, uh, quickly discuss my fall knitting plans for my daughter's handmade wardrobe. And it's something that I kind of look forward to because I look to her projects as kind of being palette cleansers. They're, they're kind of like the quick, fun projects to do in between the longer projects. So something I do want to make my daughter is called the Current Cardigan. And I've actually already made this for my daughter, but I want to make um, it in another color. So here is the Current Cardigan. And I'll put details below about where you can find this pattern. But this pattern is really great because it has sizes all the way from 0 to 6 months to 10 years old. So yeah, the price of the pattern is a little bit up there in terms of pattern pricing. But it is worth it if you've got many children of different ages to knit for because this pattern is going to cover it. And something a little kind of exciting and special for me so this is one of my projects on Ravelry and I did get a request from the designer asking to include one of my photos in her Ravelry listing. So I did say yes. So if you happen to be looking at the photos for the listing for this pattern and see this yellow cardigan, it's mine. <laughs> so that's pretty cool because it's, it's a huge compliment to hear from the designer and they want to use your photo because obviously you've done it well enough and it represents their design so nicely that they want to use your photo so I thought that was pretty cool so a little pat on the back for me <laughs> um this one there's nothing really wrong with it I just want to make a more um another one in kind of a neutral color and I want to make it in a different yarn so this is just from my 
crochet amigurumi stash this is an acrylic yarn from their in-house brand at michael's called loops and threads and the color is i believe it's just called gold and yeah it is quite bright although it's gonna look great uh for fall when the leaves are changing and everything's kind of red orange yellow um that great time before everything just turns to mush for winter but I also want to make her something a little bit more neutral. I feel like I feel like my husband does like the design of it, but I think the color is a little too bright for him and he has a little trouble figuring out what to pair it with in terms of her outfits. My husband does actually enjoy making her outfits. It's so cute. Um, so my plan is to buy the recommended yarn, which is, which is Drops Air, and I plan on buying the color Old Pink, and it's kind of just like a muted, almost vintage rose pink, and I think it'll look really great. Haven't worked with that yarn before, um, heard good things about it though, and so I'm excited to try it out on something a smaller scale and see if it's something that I want to use on garments in the future for myself. The next thing I have planned for Darcy is, it's also kind of like a matchy-matchy thing because it'll be for me as well. I've got a good old pile of petite wool from We Are Knitters in the color Yarnicorn. Woo! Uh, there we go. So yeah, the base color, I guess you could say, is the pink, and then it's got sort of rainbowish colors coming through. It's not as, um, not as, like, rainbowy. That's totally not a word, but you guys know what I mean. Um, it's not quite as colorful as I thought it was going to be, but it's still, I think it's good enough. And... For some reason in my mind, I thought it was more vibrant, but I'm, gl I'm glad it's not. The plan with this yarn is to make matching toques for Darcy and I. And last winter, I knit her up a toque in the same uh, petite wool, but in the marshmallow color. And it does still fit her. It's starting to get a little bit snug because her head has grown a few centimeters. Um, but I just want to give her another option, and I also just want to have a more colored option for myself. I wear just like a camel beige colored uh, toque that I made myself. I think it was last year. Yeah, Darcy was born. It's kind of all a blur. Um, and it's great. It's uh, neutral. It matches pretty much any outfit. But I'd like to have a little colored option just for color, obviously. <laughs> but... Um, when I'm wearing a lot of neutrals, a little pop of color is uh, kind of nice. So uh, yeah, toques, matching toques. So that's all I have really in terms of like concrete plans for Darcy. I would like to also make her a skirt and I found a pattern from Petite Knit called Nora's Skirt. I will put it up for you guys. This one is made with fingering weight yarn, so I'm not so keen about that. So I was thinking about uh, getting either a DK or a light worsted, and I'll just figure out the pattern myself. I've got elastic band already in my sewing kit, and I'm pretty sure I can just kind of make to measure kind of thing and figure it all out to make her a skirt. Um, I don't have any yarn for that, so that's why it's not really a concrete plan. But I think I want to make either like a dark green or maybe like a maroon. Something darker, but it's going to match a lot of her outfits. I think it's just going to be really cute for fall and winter. Um, especially with some tights and just her cute little boots or something like that. Uh, yeah, so that's a potential for her. But yeah, other than that, that's kind of it that's on the horizon for fall knitting for Darcy. Uh, so I guess bonus now for you guys, I do have a whip of my own that I have going on that I can share with you guys. So video, a couple episodes ago, uh, I showed the Noro yarn that I bought, the Noro Omitama Silk Garden Solo. 
and yeah so I've started my Wednesday sweater in that yarn and I'll hold it up for you guys look at that color it's so cool so I've done So I've done enough to actually be able to start the sleeve. So this is, I'm on the fourth ball right now at this point. So what I like to do when I'm knitting up sweaters, uh, I like to keep going on the body, like after it's kind of like you split for sleeves, for example. I like to keep going on the body until that ball of yarn runs out and once it runs out I switch to working on the sleeves and I just find that helps me break up the project and break up the monotony of working stockinette around and around although this has worked on five millimeter needle ugh, five millimeter needles la 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 um so it does work out quite quickly but I just like doing the sleeves first as well for when you're trying on and once you eventually get to the neckline part, everything's kind of like pulled down where it should be. And then because I'm not planning to do the full big turtleneck that the pattern has, I want to do something that's going to be a little bit raised. I want to make sure I get that in the right spot. So having the sleeves done helps the sweater kind of like sit or rest where it's going to be once you actually like wear it once it's done yeah so that is my Wednesday sweater okay I totally meant to do this earlier but I just sat down and just started talking and forgot about this uh so this probably is not going to be re to be I can't talk ah oh. wow I really wish this was a beer now so the plan was to sit down and have a beer today is Friday it's a Friday before a long weekend but um massive fail on our part we no cold beer in the fridge so I had to pull it out from our cupboard where we kind of stash our overflow of beer because we don't put all the cans in the fridge otherwise it's just not enough space and that kind of makes it sound like we drink a lot of beer that would have an overflow but it's just we only put in like four cans in at a time but anyways yeah I open the fridge no cold ones but there was this uh San Pellegrino in there so I guess that's just as good it's it's carbonated it's cold although it's been sitting back here sweating probably leaving a mark on my bookshelf there but uh in the spirit of friday all right cheers guys oh yeah yeah i definitely needed to have that sooner <laughs> so guys i hope you enjoyed going through some of my old whips and listening to my plans for Darcy's Handmade Wardrobe. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and please consider subscribing to see more videos from me. Um, so thanks so much for watching guys. Until next time, happy knitting. Bye.